Looking for a fun, new, exciting way to play fantasy sports? Make sure to check out FanDuel. Use code BENGAL at sign up for a $20 deposit bonus when you enter that code. It is the best and most fun way to play daily fantasy sports. I know I play fantasy football for the daily fantasy sports all the time. I can't really handle the grind of the season. So this is just the best way and the most fun way for me to play any type of fantasy sports. I've been doing it for a couple of years now. And FanDuel is just absolutely the best. So make sure to use code BENGAL at sign up. $20 deposit bonus. And also, if you guys want to check out my second and third channels for other videos and games you might see with some of your other favorite YouTubers that I collab with. Make sure you check that out. Both links are in the description. What's going on guys? Bengal getting here coming back at you with another video today back on New York Giants franchise. This is episode 30 something probably. We're already into the 30s. It's kind of unbelievable to me because last year through the entire year of Madden 18, I think I maybe did like maybe 30 episodes of 49ers franchise or so. And that was... That series ended in what? June or July? Something like that? We're in October. It's October 8th as I record this. Four minutes from midnight. And just, I appreciate you guys coming back. And a lot of people, they say, hey, why do you address all these comments in the episode all the time? Well, it's, I'm committed to reading the comments. I know a lot of video makers don't. But I want to make the series better so more people like to watch it. That's what my goal is. So you guys like to watch it more. So I'm trying to get the series as perfect as perfect can be uh, within reason. So that's why I'm so committed. Because I want to make the series better. Sterling Shepard's got an upgrade point though. What do we want to do? We want to really make him a slot receiver. His, I mean he is, what, the, I don't know. We'll go, we'll go deep threat on this one to make his, uh, his deep route running a little bit better. Because that's really where he needs the improvement. His overall doesn't go up, but I think he becomes a better player. With deep route running going up. Release, I don't really care that much for. But it's up to an 80 now. Which, I think that's somewhat important. Is there anyone else with anything major? Alex Espinoza has an upgrade point. Could go run stopper. He's got crazy high tackle. Crazy high block shed. Coverage is only getting better. We already know he can't catch. Dropped a pick in that last game. Um, I think I, think I want to go cover linebacker. I think I do. Would F Field General might give me coverage anyway, but I think I want to focus on coverage. Doesn't boost his overall into the 90s. He's well on his way, though. And that really doesn't give me much of a coverage boost overall. We get plus one to man, plus one to zone, 81 zone, and 78 man. I mean, he's a pretty good cover linebacker. Lorenzo Carter, his best move might be as the replacement for Olivier Vernon. He's got great zone coverage. For a linebacker, especially with his size. We might go into finesse moves here. We might go speed rusher. It's his best type. But he might be the replacement for Olivier Vernon. We have plus one of finesse moves only. Which takes him up to, what, an 84? I don't know. It'll be an interesting decision to see where Olivier Vernon is next year. And what we want to do with him. If we even want to re-sign him. And I, that could be crazy. As he is a pretty high overall. 29 years old. It all depends on the contract that he's going to command. It really will, because he's not getting any better. I am also going to make some very slight slider changes. Very slight. Uh, I'm going to turn down my run blocking to a 50 on the nose. I'm going to turn interceptions back up to a 63. Uh, pass coverage, I'm going to move to a 56. Pass defense reaction time to a 49. And then I'm going to boost their run blocking up to a 78. And our fumbles will stay the same, even though I hated that. Uh, I think... I think this is fine. Tackling also will be boosted slightly to a 40. We'll see how these play. The Saints are a good team. They were. Let's see how we perform now against the San Francisco 49ers. They're an 82 overall. I don't want to play the moments. But we do come out in our color rush jerseys. Well, we're home, so no, we don't. That's annoying. All right, well. Niners Giants combining for nine Super Bowls. And we have a Thursday night primetime game. And the Giants and the 49ers have had some really, really good playoff matchups. You look to the 80s and 90s, these were two powerhouse teams. The Giants, of course, led by Lawrence Taylor, Phil Simms, you know, Carl Banks, Harry Carson for a time. Like, the Giants had some really good players. The Niners, don't even get me started. Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Dwight Clark, 
Roger Craig, another offensive player that they had was beast. John Taylor. They had some beasts. Per usual, we're kicking off here to start, and there is a lot of wind. 13 miles per hour to what appears to be, what, the northeast? Depending, I don't remember how the stadium's positioned uh, geographically on the map. Jimmy Jesus is the quarterback play action, and Jarek McKinnon facing pressure, lobbing it up. Somebody make the play. Espinosa can't catch the ball. We're off to a hot start here with crazy plays happening. George Kittle was the target. And what a ridiculous decision by Jimmy Garoppolo. Play action again. Jimmy Garoppolo looking for a receiver. Finds the former Texas Longhorn Marquise Goodwin. Former Buffalo Bill as well. A couple years now here in San Fran. And uh, he's only gotten better over the course of his career. He's also an Olympic track star. Not maybe a star, but he's an Olympic uh, runner. He does the hurdles, I think. Or the long jumps. Something. I don't remember. Second and two. See if they keep the ball on the ground this time. It's going to be another play action. This is the play action 49ers right here, and it's tipped, or at least knocked down, by the linebacker, P.J. Goodson. And this Niners team doesn't look nearly as good through the air as they have on the ground. Only one rush to Jarek McKinnon, who is a pretty good running back, honestly, but Matt Breda is really what I'm looking at. They are in a rare set here. They're in a rare set. The fullback with the tailback. Kyle Juszczyk with nowhere to go. Loses four as Alex Espinoza records his 10th tackle for loss on the season. They had a tight end in the backfield. They had a fullback in the backfield. What package is that? What could that possibly be? Third down here early for this Giants team. Who do we want to go to? Saquon Barkley. He's got a linebacker on him, but it's no ordinary linebacker, unfortunately. Reuben Foster closes in so quickly. And it, even though it's just inches here, with the wind going away, we're just going to take the punt for the rookie, Kendall Newfeld. Try to pin him super deep. And that's a fantastic punt across the stadium. Down to the six. Kendall Newfeld, what a punt. I can't risk giving the Niners the ball. Uh, inside the 30. It's guaranteed points. And now we have him at the 6. This is a really good spot for us. 3rd and 9. Jimmy G in an empty gun set. Looking to get some pressure on the quarterback. Roman Pugh with an inside move and Jimmy Garoppolo's going deep. And far too long for Dante Pettis. Morris Dubose is back to return. He will catch it and get some blocks. DeGear, do something, man! Morris Dubose just with pure speed. We're looking at a third and 16. Our offensive line still struggles to uh, hold off passers, pass rush. And I, I take his out of field goal range because I turn around trying to drop back and avoid a sack. David Bass. Oh my God, man. We've ruined so many drives by taking sacks. But I mean, a lot of the time there's not much you can do. Another play action. And Olivier Vernon having a career year. Are they not going to credit him for the sack there? Are they not? Surely they would. I don't know. It didn't pop up. Regardless, Olivier Vernon has been playing so well this year. He's overshadowing the Roman soldier at defensive end. And that might have been a false start by the left guard. I think this one's going to be moving back even further. Second and 24 for the 49ers. Third and 18. 49ers backed up basically into their own end zone. Jimmy G throwing quick and it's picked off by Jalen Mills. He finally is brought down at the 16. But this is such a weird situation because uh, Jalen Mills is the worst player on our defense. It's not even close. He is the worst player on our defense and he gets gashed every game but he'll get an interception. So it's so many people like, eh. Let off of Jalen Mills a little bit. He gets gashed every week and then makes a big play and everyone forgets about it. He's like Marcus Peters. This is this is a super weird situation. We'll see if anything gets open. I'm looking to the right side of the field. Oh, we got it over the middle. It's Odell, he holds on. I hated that set. Everything about that defense, I didn't like at all. Here's Kershaw. Power back. 
Powering into the end zone. Touchdown. What a great run from Carlos Kershaw. The offensive line obviously had a little bit to do with it. And Saquon Barkley's out for the game with a low back strain. So the rookie running back out of Penn State. No, this is not real life. I do not mean Saquon Barkley. Carlos Kershaw is going to have to step in and make some big time plays like he did on that touchdown run. That is some open running room for Jarek McKinnon. He's going to break a Derwin James tackle. Jalen Mills brings him down from behind. Roman Pugh did a great job of uh, making Jarek McKinnon slow down by getting in front of him. But that is a that is a run we cannot allow. Third and ten. Can we expect play action here? It's been the story of the game thus far. I'm not going to do it this time. Let's get after Jimmy G. He's going to throw it away. Oh, pressure was coming in. Third and inches. Kershaw is going to get it. And I try to take that up the middle with Carlos Kershaw. I don't think we got it. It's going to be fourth and inches for the second time this game. Backed up deep, and I just can't go for it from the 16. Wind is against us now. We should have called a die. That's a bad play call by me to accept the stretch there. I didn't, I didn't look at it too good. That was my bad. Go Espinoza. Get after him. It's a great play by Julius Manning. He's like a, you know, a fourth linebacker for this team. Of course, we play a 4-3, so we only rock with a three usually on the field at one time. That's the most. But Julius Manning is a safety. Acts like another linebacker. A decent cover linebacker in the box. We have some linebackers that actually cover better than him. But uh, he's a good player. And that's nearly intercepted again by Jalen Mills. Excuse me. That's open. Oh, that's a strike from Laletta. And uh, Howard Russell cannot hold on to the ball. Second and 10. Gallman this time, the tailback. He has got some running room. 14-yard pickup on his first run of the game. And this Saquon Barkley injury, it's only a lower back strain, so he should be back next week. But we got some running backs stepping up. Oh, we got Evan Ingram. We got him. We got him. Outrun Adrian Colbert. The stiff arm leads him out of bounds. But Adrian Colbert nowhere to be found in that secondary. Dahlman oh, went for a ridiculous hurdle. Not quite the Saquon Barkley hurdle of a... Uh, Clearing the defenders. <laughs> but Wayne Gallman flips his way down to the three. That's open. Sterling Shepard, touchdown. And there's an injured niner down on the field. It's Jamar Taylor. One of their starting cornerbacks. That could be a big loss and a big storyline going forward. That's Kyle Juszczyk breaking a tackle. From B.J. Goodson, and there's a flag. That's probably a face mask on Derwin James. Looked like it could have been a face mask. Maybe a hold if we're lucky. It's an illegal block in the back. That's obviously going to be the offense. Jay Samaro, the former New York Jet. Third and four. I want to dial up pressure, but we're going to switch to a cover two. And hold contain. Landon Collins. Roman Pugh brings him down. The Roman soldier gets to the quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. And that's our first sack of the entire game here in the second quarter. As Jimmy G pulled a me, ran backwards with a QB. Third and 18. I don't know, man. I mean, we might take a deep shot here. We got Odell. And that ball is knocked out. Who is in coverage there? Akella Witherspoon. All right. Under a minute to play in the first half. That's wide open. Man, we've, we've been struggling to tackle a lot. We got a 14 point lead, but we've played anything but perfect football. Let's play man coverage on Pierre Garcon. I'm down. That's gonna be right to the flat. Jalen Mills, one on one. He's gonna step out of bounds. Get to Jimmy G, get to the outside, over the middle. A diving Dante Pettis makes the play. Man coverage is just it's just so bad. I don't know why I continue to come out in man when 99 speed, 90 man can't cover anybody. That's Morris Dubose in man coverage. Terrible. Because man coverage is terrible. It does not work. That's out of the back of the end zone. That's not a touchdown. 
That is not a touchdown. There is no way. Can we get a review on this, please? Can we get a review? I can't challenge, obviously, because it's inside two minutes, but there's no way. Oh, did he drag both? Oh, man. Hold on. Did he... I guess that, that right foot they're saying was down? They're saying that touch while he had possession? I don't know, man. That seems really close to me, but... You're gonna give it to him, you're gonna give it to him, I guess. That's a good block. Sterling Shepard, man, we're overusing the hurdle a little bit. Probably should have stepped out of bounds there. I gotta have way better uh, awareness of the situation. I'm like the all Madden CPU. Just no idea what the clock is or how many timeouts or what. I don't know why I just didn't step out of bounds. That is the wrong button. You know when the running backs usually are one and they change them to Y and you don't check the button? And then you try to go to the running back out of the backfield and it's not R1? That's what happened there. There's Odell. You gotta hold on. There's not a player on this team apart from Howard Russell. He holds, he holds it. He never catches the ball. But then Odell Beckham Jr. He drops more passes for us. There's not a player other, other than Howard Russell. Those two do not catch the ball. It's so frustrating. We got a one-on-one -on -one spot. I guess they're saying that was uncatchable because I need a flag there. I do. Start of the third quarter and the second half, obviously. Howard Russell is the return man. As he's a playmaker, we want to get the ball in his hands, but he doesn't hold on to it ever, so he returns kicks now. Oh, here's Kershaw with some blocks. Power through him. For a power running back, I don't see Carlos Kershaw running over anybody ever. He stays up through contact usually for a little bit. But I just need him to bowl somebody over and keep going. Beast mode on him. Wayne Gallman is an absolute monster. He is the new RB1. Wayne Gallman, he has worse stats all around than Saquon. And, uh, of course, Carlos Kershaw. But he, he's making plays like a monster. Second and ten. That's it. Sterling Shepard. That Z spot and go is such a good play because every time the middle linebacker who's on that fades away from the route and it leaves it wide open on a pass lead away. I love it. And then Carlos Kershaw. That's not a touchdown. Is that worth a challenge? I think that's a really, really bad spot. I, I do. It just felt like one. I'm not going to challenge because of where we are. We could challenge it. You're really not going to get a spot of the ball uh, over a turn usually, but that is a touchdown is what that is. That is a clear touchdown. I don't see a way we don't get this. Carlos Kershaw is very, very clearly over the line. The knee comes down there, but it doesn't matter because he was already across the plane. All the tip of the ball needs to do is touch the white line to start of the goal line. And that's, he's in. You're into the end zone for the touchdown there. You got to overturn this. And how can you not? After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. How can you not? It's clear as day. What do you mean he's not in? Let's check it out. Aerial view. We'll be at the goal line. Well, we're on a whatever here. So he gets stopped. He gets stood up right here. Unless you're calling forward progress right here, which you're not going to call it at contact. The ball crosses the plane right here for sure. The knee is not down. That ball, in my opinion, is clearly, clearly across. Where does the knee touch? Right here. Bang. That ball is still over. Still over the line. Look at where it is. It's very clearly across. That is unbelievable to me that they would not overturn that. We lose a timeout. We'll still probably get it on the next play. But how can you not award the touchdown when you go back and look at it 
It's a video game. It's a computer. You can see that he's over. And now we're getting stopped at the one. We might not get this. We're going to try goal line, halfback dive. Just saying our offensive line is better than your defensive line. And clearly it isn't. People always wonder why I don't come out in goal line on the goal line. You know why? It's because the defense comes out in the heaviest packages imaginable, and then you can't run the ball. So that's why I do that. 17-7. If that comes back to bite me, man, I don't even know what to tell you. Because we lost a timeout. That hurts. Could hurt a lot. It's a close game. And we don't get the touchdown there. It should be 21-7. to That's got to be a great play, and it is. Olivier Vernon shuts down Jarek McKinnon. He was averaging... Five and a half yards per carry. He's still not far from that. This is a big third and three. This is a very big third and three. They're not going to run the ball. They don't run the ball in these spots. I accidentally dove, and that's wide open over the middle anyway. Where's the defense there? Where is Alex Espinoza in coverage? Because that is wide open over the middle. They had one thing over the middle, one route, one curl over the middle. The hook zone from Espinoza, not even close. Where are you? Play action, a use check. Another check down. George Kittle, another tight end. Oh, that's a bad time. OV comes back and gets him. Olivier Vernon picks up his 10th sack of the season. Why do I feel like it's more? I feel like he always has so many multi-sack games. I feel like he's always the one getting after the quarterback. Good work. Field goal is good. 17-10. So, I guess not scoring the touchdown doesn't hurt us that much right now. It makes it a touchdown game with that field goal. But other than that, we're still in a good spot. We should get the ball in the end zone again. We should score points on this drive. This is not an impenetrable defense that San Fran has. We are at home. Let somebody make a play. We want to go Evan Ingram. But we're going to take a one-on-one -on -one shot. Howard. Russell makes the catch. Stays on his feet. Still going. Howard Russell end zone touchdown. Unbelievable. My voice is going out a little bit. But his fifth touchdown on the season. Howard Russell. Third and two. It's a handoff. And it's a stop. Espinoza comes up big again. Now, if I'm San Fran, I punt here from the 34. It's exactly what they're going to do. And Bradley Pinion, the familiar face of last franchise, Madden 18 49ers, punts the ball back to DuBose, and he goes nowhere. And we're not going to get it. Easiest option that was open. Figured we just check down. And punt the ball away. We got a 14-point lead. There's not a ton of time left. We have the best defense in the NFL. I keep saying that because it's true. Overpower them. Man, our secondary has not been up to chops this game. There's one interception. That was by Jalen Mills early on. And these play actions continue to fool the defense. Get after him, Pew. Another receiver wide open over the middle. We need to get three linebackers out here over. Come on, defense. At the run. It's a play action. I, even I was fooled. Jimmy G's got all day. Lobbed end zone. No way. Surely not. Dante Pettis again? There's no way he got in this time. Can we get a replay going? Jimmy Garoppolo, end zone. Don't show the feet. Don't even bother. All right, here we go. Still don't even show him. One hand. Landon Collins gets his hand in there, but he, not really. You're telling me that was a touchdown? Yeah, give, overturn that. Come on, bring that one back. Let's see these replays. I just, I don't believe that. He's, it looks so out to me. This is the best look we're going to get. So he's got one. He's got, he's got maybe zero. How would you ever call that a touchdown? That is the most ridiculous call I've ever seen. Thankfully, it's overturned. It's going to bring up fourth and inches. We are going to flip and get on this to run McKinnon. Nowhere to go. What a play from Alexander Espinoza. 
And let's finish him, man. Let's finish this game. That's a good ball from Laletta. Foot on the gas pedal. That's the way we're going to win this game. We got a 14-point lead. Just no interceptions. It's going to be a pretty easy recipe to follow. It's going to be run. Whether it's closer, we'll run again and then pass. I mean, depending on the situation, obviously. But it's going to be at least one run per drive. Or per set of downs. And here's a big one from Carlos Kershaw. Still can't really find the power to run through these guys. Or run over them, but... He's been okay. 3.5 per carry. I mean, I'll take that, I guess. I won't take 3.5 yards per carry is not good. I'll take Wayne Gallman, though. Wayne Gallman's been a different animal. Wayne Gallman is insane! Wayne Gallman, four rushes for 44 yards. Do you want to be RB2? Because you're showing me something here today. Kershaw back in the game. Perfect time for a play action. That's exactly what we're running. And uh, we're going to throw quick to Evan Ingram. Wanted Odell, wanted Sterling Shepard. The throws were too dangerous. Sterling Shepard stopped running his route because they do that in this game for some reason. They just stop when they feel like it. They're like, ah, I've gone far enough. I, I go just to the point where you're about to throw it because I'm about to run into the open space. And then I'll just stop so you throw an interception. Well, not this time. Third and two. I just I can't get the rhythm going with Carlos Kershaw. And we are going to kick the field goal here. 27 to 10 is a fine score to work with. He's got to step up, play defense. I mean, they have two minutes and 36 seconds to score 17 points. And that's just to tie. That's with, you know, holding us completely to zero points. I don't think it's even doable at all. Garoppolo steps up, throws a dart over the middle. Guess what? Who cares? Now you're going to move into the hurry up. It doesn't matter. Garoppolo running right into the arms of Lawrence Thomas. Some have dubbed him the new LT. He doesn't start, so I don't know if I'd go that far. But we got our backups in on the defensive line. And Lawrence Thomas enjoying the opportunity as, what was it, Julius Manning who just didn't jump that route when it was thrown right to him. But look at the sense of urgency by the Niners, man. They just called their first time out. There's seven seconds left. Seven seconds. And that is going to be a touchdown. Niners get into the end zone with four seconds left. Congrats. You guys going to... Yeah, wave, wave to the fans. Yeah, nice. You guys are going to lose. You have four seconds to score ten points. This was terrible. All right, any play ends it here. And it's going to be handoff to Carlos Kershaw. We're going to bounce to the outside. There's a flag. Because that's a great move, ref. Throw a flag as time expires. So we got to redo this play. Just decline it if you're the defense. It's an illegal block in the back. We've seen that three times called today by Odell. Just decline it. Game can't end on a defensive penalty, I thought. They may have declined it. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Howard Russell with the play of the game, I think, clearly. Defense was pretty good overall. Uh, I'd like to see them play better. It's not like these receivers were out of this world and they were continually getting open. So we might have a little bit of play with the sliders again. But I think the games are playing fairly close. This team was not anywhere close to our level. Yet it was a somewhat close game, which I don't enjoy. I really don't. Uh, the Odell, not Odell, the Saquon Barkley injury didn't end up mattering for much because we saw the emergence of Wayne Gallman, who was a beast. Carlos Kershaw with a TD didn't really have the average per carry that we'd like. Two touchdowns for Dante Pettis. One for Sterling Shepard, one for Howard Russell, and it was a beauty. That was his only catch of the game. A 70-yarder. And did he drop any? He dropped one as well, obviously. Defensively, a bunch of tackles for loss. Didn't really get too many sacks. I mean, we had three. Not terrible. An interception for Jalen Mills. I want to see one more thing. How many catches did Odell have today? Odell had one catch for five yards. Wow. So we'll spend some upgrade points before we call it an episode. If you stayed to the end, you get to see Julius Manning go up to an 81 overall with his zone coverage, hopefully bumping up a bunch. Plus one. Great. 76 zone. That's fantastic for your safety. Wayne Gallman played fantastically. You know what? He's actually not that bad. I didn't know his trucking was 86. Wayne Gallman's not that bad. 
I think we're going to focus on him being a power back. Trucking, give me a plus three. That'd be so good. Plus two. I mean, I'll take that. 81 break tackle, 88 trucking. Wayne Gallman was something else. And of course, Kyle Laletta. Really not a bad quarterback. 82 deep accuracy, 88 medium, 86 short, 93 throw power. He doesn't he doesn't break sacks at all. He just doesn't do that. That's not his game. Field general would do the most with his accuracy. Let's do strong arm. 78 overall. Does it impact throw power? Nope, but we get plus one break sack, throw accuracy deep, throw accuracy mid, and of course awareness goes up. You know what? He could be our long-term option. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Not gonna scout this week. Eh. Who cares? We're eight and five. Tied with the Redskins for the NFC East lead as the Cowboys have dropped from first at seven and two after losing four in a row to seven and six and third in the division. Wow. What a development. No skill points for anyone, otherwise it would show on the left somewhere. Well, that's going to do it for me, guys. Big game next week against the uh, Los Angeles Rams. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.